Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Medieval 2 Total War Definitive Edition here today on the channel. We're episode 11 of my Holy Roman Empire series. Here today, we're going to continue our conquest of the Holy Land and hopefully we can take Jerusalem and take the most of Egypt. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Helps the channel keep on going. Alrighty, so first things first, we've got some armies just south um, west of Cairo here that we have to deal with. We took Alexandria and Cairo in quick succession. Now the Egyptians have sent some armies to try and reinforce their position and try and take back their own cities. All right, well, let's send the turn to continue, see if they attack us. They haven't. There's, like, hardly any factions left now, so the end turn is just... Whoop, it's super quick. Right, so, um, currently where we stand, we're 105 turns in. Most of Europe is fully under our control. We've got a really nice border wall, which really stretches from the Balkans, um, the Baltic... Um, towards Turkey and whatnot. As we take Timbuktu here in our first crusade, we've got a bit of a buffer zone between the Holy Roman Empire lands and Russia, and then we've got the same thing with Turkey. And I wouldn't mind doing the same in Egypt. I might actually even fort wall off Jerusalem, uh, to be honest, as the Byzantines have created a bit of a crusading kingdom where the Principality of Antioch <laughs> is in, like, Medieval Kingdoms 1212 AD. Alright, so, the army's here from Timbuktu. We've got some Crusader traits now, which is fantastic. Um, so, what I want to do is basically send these armies back north to Spain, because we're still preparing for the eventuality of the invasion of the Americas. We're going to need a lot of armies for that, because the Aztecs are quite built up at this time period, and we also want to try and take Florida. We want to push into the Caribbean as well. So, we've got the... Egyptian Sultan here. We've managed to divide and conquer those armies. Um, and we'll fight this one on the field. Let's play a field battle against the Egyptians. Once more onto the breach, dear friends. Once more. King Henry V. Alright. Let's get stuck into the Egyptians. And then we should be able to push further south. I don't even know what the territory is that far south. I can't remember. But they should have some territories nearby. By Sankt Michael, this moment is worth savoring. Our duty is now clear. We have put our faith in God. We face a foe to test our mettle. I stand before a magnificent company of Imperial soldiers. All that can be done is done, and only battle remains. Look to your arms, and prepare your souls. Our Egyptian foes should pray to their God. Shortly, they will be judged before him. We will send them all to heaven or hell soon enough. Alright. Well, let's get stuck into them. So we have Prince Dieter. Soon to be... The fourth emperor we've had this series. And looking at his traits and his command and dread, it's a really good example of if you have strong, fantastic faction leaders and particularly heirs and princes, that can flow on through the generations. Because obviously he's... Well, his father wasn't the best commander, Conrad. Um, but particularly his, his uh, grandfather and his great-grandfather were absolutely top-tier elite conquerors. And he was able to continue with those traits. He's a born conqueror, thanks to them. So, always in Medieval 2. High risk, high reward, of course. But you should always get your family members, particularly your kings and princes, into the fighting and try and win a lot of victories. Rack and stack them up. Alrighty, so first time facing the Egyptians here, and we're hitting that time period in the campaign. Once you get around to 50, 60 turns, a lot of armies start to have catapults and ballistas. So you do tend to lose a lot more units, because look at this crazy catapult spam. We're really going to have to watch out for this. We've got some Armenian cavalry as well, so we'll try and swing them around. So we're going to kick this video off to start things with a battle, which is fantastic. As we charge on in here, perfect. And once 
we destroy these two full stacks, we're going to be in a really good position to sort of secure ourselves. And s sort of bunker down, bed in, and, and basically control Cairo and Alexandria with impunity. I don't reckon they're going to be able to muster many more forces to retake the cities. So we've got some dismounted feudal knights carving up in the Holy Land, which is fantastic. As we make a claim for the Levant and try to bring it under Holy Roman Empire control. The Mongols are still ravish <laughs> raiding and ravishing the land of Anatolia. They haven't actually made a new home yet, which is interesting. Because they did take a settlement in the last episode, but they elected to sack it and raise it, so then it turned a rebel. My archers are currently trading here with some Balkan archers making up our army build. Great to see mercenaries throughout the Empire coming out and help, which is realistic. We've, got, we've conquered so many lands in this series. I love seeing that being reflected in our units and in our command structure. We took the Balkans a fair while ago. We also had... Um, British units here and there. I just misclicked there. It's annoying. There we go. Let's reset this. Um, also, I prefer this. Um, I, I haven't really addressed it now thinking about it, but I prefer this tactical view for medieval. Too. I like to have my units down the bottom, the unit card in the right, and then um, some of the more hotkeys and stuff on top. It just, I think I can see more of the battlefield a lot easier instead of that huge, bulky bottom bit. I know it's nostalgia having that, but I do recommend this layout. Um, also, WASDA as well on your keyboard, just in the settings. Do you guys play with the vanilla Medieval 2 loadout, or do you, do you prefer this one? I think I, I, I changed a couple years ago. I say that's probably 10 years ago now. <laughs> Feels like a couple. But I think you can just see more of the battlefield. Because there's a lot of wasted space with that huge bottom hotbar. Although, you do lose that button, the faction button where you can click to see where all the enemy are. That is a little bit annoying, but you can navigate that if you just can control A, you can sort of see all your units. And we'll end the battle there. Really good victory. We've defeated the Egyptian Sultan, the first Sultan. Oh my god, he costs 12k. <laughs> We're going to get rid of him though. If we can cut off the head of the snake, we might be able to throw the Egyptian dynasty, throw the Ayyubid uh, family structure and hierarchy well out of whack in place. Here we go, fellas. Gunpowder. Gunpowder. This terrible weapon will make armor obsolete and render castle walls near useless. It would be wise to be the first to master its use in war. How awesome's that? So, 106 turns in, we can get Gumpa. What's the date? The year. Yeah, I want to see the year. 1290. Uh, Fritz the Crusader. Teutonic Knight. I was just looking through the chat. So, Chivalric, Piety, Command. No other got it, which is annoying, because I guess he was the one to deal the final blow in um, Tim Buck 2. And, uh... We'll take it. Alright, Q. Q. Yeah, Fritz von Kessel. His first one time. Dongola is the name of the city, now that I've learnt. I couldn't remember what it was, to be exact. Alright, we're going to be pushing into the Levant. We're going to push into Gaza. There's been a fight there already. Um, and then we're going to try and take Jerusalem. Oh, they have Akka. Ah, so they, they've got a fair few. I'm going to send a spy further north. I just want to see how built up the Byzantines are there. Interesting. But the Fort Well still holds. And then we've got the huge... Holding here. Oh, I kind of regret giving the Russians Helsinki and that money because they attacked me in the end anyway. It seemed to work better with the Turks. We didn't even give them territory in the end. Okay, so let's take this settlement now. Where is this Sudan? In? No, no, it's technically Egypt. Egypt's quite bloody big when you think about it. 
Okay, pushing eastward now. Hopefully we can occupy the strip. All right, so 110 turns in. We're looking good, fellas. Yeah, so check this out in the north. So Emperor Conrad's pushing in here now. We're about to get rid of a, another Egyptian Sultan. God, I love Sultanas. I don't know if you get them where you, where you are, but... Easter hot cross buns. The chocolate ones are pretty good, but they're a little bit sickly. But I love occasionally having raisins in toast. And it's so it's so good. <laughs> oh, I love sultanas. I don't know. If you're an Australian, chalky hot cross buns or sultanas. Some people like no fruit in them, which is a bit wild, but whatever. All right, so we're moving. Um, yeah, I'd imagine America has hot cross buns. But Britain definitely has. They've got muffins, like English muffins. I guess they call muffins, like breakfast muffins there. We call them English muffins. <laughs> Just looking at the mercenary pool that we can get here. Unhorse knights, that's kind of cool. Let's get a couple of those in. And Keresmian uh, cavalry as well, as we push towards Jerusalem. Yeah, so the Byzantines have Acre. Huh. Oh my god, there's an earthquake in Alexandria. Uh, not good. Just bringing more reinforcements over to Jerusalem. And we'll start sieging it out. We'll bring in some crusaders as well. But there doesn't seem to be that much of a garrison in there, which is annoying. It's not going to be a huge, a massive, an epic siege of Jerusalem, what I would hope. Okay, so... Once you're here with some more siege equipment, are they going to come and attack me? Stop me from taking it. And then we can have a huge battle on the fields of Jerusalem. That would be ideal. Okay. Yeah, it's a, just an easy order as well. We had none of them like crazily. That's annoying. Oh, well, Jerusalem has been taken, which is massive. And you do forget that if you take Jerusalem, you get a worldwide public order buff. Yes, that's right. In the stats... Um, the public order will go up. Um, where is it exactly? It's there somewhere. But, yeah. It's like um, one of the major wonders uh, in Medieval 2. You get a massive worldwide population bonus by a couple percentile, which is massively decent. It's always worth getting Jerusalem in Medieval 2 just because of that. Looks like the Mongols have actually swung away from Anatolia and are trying to push north. Into the Crimea. Look at this. Oh, my God. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, my God. People, some of you guys know the Mongols won't have 10, 12 stats. Stats, they're not that strong. Dude, look at that. That shit's insane. Like I don't have Tiribisi or any of these other territories. Yeah, so Adan has been taken. I guess they're, like, avoiding my fort war. Maybe they, like, can see it. Like, holding Baghdad would be an absolute nightmare. And the Byzantines there are quite built up as well. I kind of like that. I like it a lot. The Byzantines fled from Constantinople and Nicaea and have set up a really cool kingdom here in Antioch, Aleppo, Acre, and Cyprus. I really do appreciate when the AI builds up like this. Okay, so uh, we've got those crusading armies. I might actually send a couple of these blokes to Jerusalem because I want to try and fortify it. Uh, slightly. We're sort of getting to the stage now where I kind of want to just power through the turns. There's only a couple of G Egyptian territory that we have to deal with, but unless the Mongols directly attack us, I can't see a battle coming for quite some time, but you never know. The Byzantines might betray us, attack us, same with the Turks or the, the Russians. you got to be joking. The Mongols have declared war upon us. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, luckily, we don't border them. Uh, they're pushing towards Trebizond, so they might actually make their way to us. War between the Holy Roman Empire and the Mongols is about to begin. We should have enough there, but we might need more additional reinforcements. We'll just have to see. Okay, we're going to take Jeddah now with Prince Dieter. And there shouldn't be too many more Egyptian territories... You'd think. As Prince Dieter is... ...becoming the... 
conqueror of Egypt in the east now. And we'll replenish and repair where we can. Nearly a 10 star commander, crikey. So they have Baghdad. I'd nearly make peace with them if they're interested and they're very demanding. Because they must have, what, one, maybe one territory in the desert, but I don't want Baghdad, to be honest. That's rife and right in the spawn zone of Mongol and Tumarid forces. Um, like, I could even, like, fort wall off Jerusalem. Like, they, I think we would expose ourselves actually trying to take Acre and um, Antioch and whatnot. Okay, um, we've still got quite a strong military presence over here. That's to eventually go into the Americas, which we're still uh, 30, 40 turns off, let's say. Okay. We're looking good, though. Oh, Acker's undefended. I could take that, but I'm not. Yes, and it's gone through and accepted. I told you the plan would work, guys. So, we've married... The Byzantine princess. Five heart as well to um, Prince Dieter, hopefully Emperor Dieter in the future. Awesome, that's a really good coup. That's really an astute marriage for him. Now we've got a claim to Constantinople. And we've made an alliance with the Byzantines. Q. His father was half Danish as well. Things are looking good in the Holy Land. Three full stacks in Jerusalem. It's helped out worldwide public order for us now, which is huge. It looks like the Mongols have come back. It looks like they were heading up into Crimea, but now they've swung into Russian-occupied Terablisi. Yeah, this is what I want. So we haven't had a direct conflict with them. If they want to go back and forth from Trebizond to Georgia, like hanging in and around Russian and Turkish and Byzantine lands, I'd rather them do that than us face them. Oh, what? Oh, so the Pope called a crusade. That's annoying. I've been mentioning and fearing this... How many episodes? Three, four episodes ago now. So we must join the Q crusade or we'll get excommunicated. That is bullshit. That's so stupid. We own the Pope. We'll just get a new one. Are you going to excommunicate excommu the one faction? Like, if he's on the field, we should be able to just, like, get rid of him. Like, literally. Oh, another crazy events. Just sort of powering through it now. There's so many notifications. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to declare war against the Turks. And take it and anger them. We're at war with enough. Emperor Conrad is no more. He's died. Emperor Dieter has now come of age. And ascended to the throne. Yeah. Although we're at war with the Turks, I'm not going to call a crusade on them. So the throne, uh, it's going to probably pass to his brother. Emperor Dieter is 43. Jonas is 2. Prince, Prince Henricus, 36, will be emperor after him. And Jihad's been called on Cairo. A little bit annoying. 130 turns in here now. We're just chilling. Nothing too crazy has really just happened. Oh, they might take Adana though. Oh no. Well, there's been a flash flood here in Nicaea and we've lost a bunch of people here. Oh, that's terrible. There's actually a fair few of them as well. Oh my god. That's kind of bad. What's ha So, let's have a look at this. Now you die peacefully. Peacefully. God, this family tree is insane. I think it was this line. Died tragically. Oh, Sigismund's sons. Oh no, Sigismund lost... Oh wow, that family tree is nearly gone. And a couple of others here as well. Oh, wow. That's terrible. Alright, the Mongols are back on the move. I've got my spy following them. They never took Tbilisi, but... They're in and around there. Yerevan isn't control taken, but they haven't taken and landed themselves just yet. 
Just going around here now, making sure everything's on construction. I don't like recruitment because I like to manually control that myself. I don't need a full stack in Frankfurt for whatever reason. A new plague grips the land. The Black Death rides upon the wind, killing all who breathe it in a matter of days. What horrible crime has mankind committed for God to punish the whole world so horribly? Oh no! Thankfully we've got that, um... Public order buff, because the plague, the black plague is hit. So that means the majority, or if not all of the settlements around the world are going to get the plague. Spreading Civil the revolt there forces. in Anatolia, but nothing too much to deal with. Oh my god, it's going to prune the family tree a bit, which is annoying. But luckily, we've got a lot of our armies in um, forts. The Great Mortality continues. Oh no, we lost someone to her heresy. That's the first time that's happened. That can be quite annoying. Uh, the Inquisition is charged with rooting out heresy wherever it dwells. Such holy work is not for the faint-hearted. For it seems only after sufficient persuasion is applied do the guilty confess their sins. Jans von Jun Jingen. Interesting name. The crusade failed at Iconium because they didn't want to accept it. Oh wow, check this out. So he was the guy that was taken out. Uh, Orneus died peacefully. As we're powering through the turns here, 137, um, we're just losing family members that are dying of mostly old age. As not much conquering is going now between this 150 turns, 100 to 150 turns, because we're just sort of waiting for the Americas now and how the hordes react. But check this out the plague has been spread throughout all our, um, your population is going to decline slightly, and we might even lose some of our family members as well. Lucky I've got them in forts as well, so that's going to decrease that. I recommend not keeping generals in cities when the Great Plague goes on through, but the Emperor's got it, unfortunately. Yeah, so look, look at all this. Like Most of the family members have been plagued out. Just need to keep an eye on it. But... It's an interesting mechanic because sometimes you're just like too built up. You got too many generals, you kind of want to get rid of them a bit. I don't want Emperor Deer to get taken out by the plague, so we'll try and move them out of the settlements. The Black Death passes. So we've survived it. Hopefully, without too many family member casualties. We did lose a fair few though. One, two, three, four. A couple of others as well. But no one who's directly important. Oh, uh, maybe. Die peacefully. So none of the main line. He got taken out by the plague. Okay, so it's mostly just like the extended family here. Which is quite a bit. So we saw four or so. Five. We've managed to build the world's first huge cathedral. If Beautiful. If there were doubts as to the power of the church, they were dispelled once the people gazed upon God's greatest house on earth. Its towering presence here shall ensure Christian dominance throughout the land. These events, uh, I love the events. They're nice and short. Maybe I should chop them up and make them some shorts. Let me know in the comments. An even greater threat. Here we go. The Tumorids are probably about to arrive. It's only a matter of time before they do. Here they come. Nobody would have dreamed that a serious peril could ever rise from the east again. However, Timur the Lame a mighty warlord from Transoxania has arrived on the eastern borders of our maps, bringing with him a legacy of conquest that cannot be ignored. 
Having already conquered Persia and distant India, Timur is certain to bring with him something exotic to show the people of the West. Something they will be sure to remember as long as they live. So what's that turn? 146. I thought it can sometimes come a bit later. I swear it was like 180 or so. I thought the Aztec stuff was before then. Well, they're spawned right there in the Caucasus. Let's move our spy to have a bit of a, a gauge if we can see. No, we can't. Man, we're still dealing with the Mongols. Which haven't taken anything. So here are the Tomb Rids. They've now come flying on in. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, trying to actually hold this territory, it's like nearly not worth it. <laughs> like, you have to put so many armies there. Yeah, we're definitely better to fort wall off that. Because, by the look, I think the Mongols have might have even, like, raised Kiev. Yeah, like, as you can see there, they're probably in the fog of war, but we just can't see. They're just focusing on the Russians now, which is really interesting. They couldn't break through the Turkic barricade to us. Oh, so they're really heading north. Look at that. Yeah, so they couldn't make their way through Anatolia. Now they've swung back up into Russia. I guess they wanted to avoid the Tumorids that were coming and heading on over. We've still got a pretty strong military presence in Jerusalem. Still got a bunch of forts here. And we're still keeping the presence on that Russian border as well. But at the moment, we've sort of hit our max capacity of units. We're trying to increase that by investing. We've also unlocked um, better quality units as well, which we have to pay for, which is really expensive. Most of our military capacity is coming from Spain, actually. A new home. Oh, the Mongols have finally taken some territory. Good. So I think that will. I think that reduces their army capacity because then they have to technically start paying for for like settlement upkeep and stuff. I, I, I think it turns them. They don't get that. They don't get that sort of, those cheats and that free ability to have all those hordes. So they've taken S Smolensk, um, which is annoying that they've landed there. I would have preferred for them to land in the Caucasus. But you can see so much rebel territories um, over there. I'm nearly tempted to negotiate with the Mongols for peace. Maybe I should have given them a settlement. Crusade has been called for Baghdad. I'm not really overly interested in that. Would you believe it? They finally attacked me. 155 turns in. They've been here for so long. Uh, they must have... I don't know. Their pathfinding must have changed, eh? Because normally they push through Anatolia. I guess they could and they swung around. Because there is a human uh, player bias. Oh my god, we're going to have to deal with this. Well, luckily they've taken some territory. I think there's actually a strat that you can actually give them territory to choose where they recruit from further because I, I do believe that once they are landed and they take a settlement, they're easier to deal with rather than being a an open horde faction. All right, well, they've actually attacked me on the, the border here. They're going after the Ruskies, which is hilarious, if I do say so myself. Dealing with the Mongol hordes. Right, well, luckily I've kept a pretty decent military presence here. To be honest, I was a little bit lulled into a false sense of security. I, I thought we'd fight the Mongols eventually, but in Anatolia. I just thought, because they've been focusing, they've been chipping away at the Turks, they never really pushed on through. They were chipping away against the Russians in Georgia. They did, however, take Kiev, which is interesting, and then they pushed up to Smolensk and then took it. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful here. We might actually have to throw more military forces and assets on the border there. And then we've got the Tomb Rids to deal with as well. I was just sort of locking down Anatolia and Jerusalem because basically all we need to do now we don't need to crush annihilate the Tomb Rids and Mongols. We just need to maintain them because I want to be just waiting for that time to get into the Americas where I want to take their land. I think it'd be quite cool in this alternative timeline to see if it wasn't the Spanish and the Portuguese going into the New World, but this time around it was the German Empire 
under the Holy Roman Empire. With Europe fully under our control. All well, the future events of the Kaiser and the and the Reich, the Third Reich, happen. More than likely. <laughs> okay. So, a couple options here. Hmm. The Mongols are just, they just got such an exceptional cavalry. The thing is, chasing them and fighting them on the open field can be a bit maddening, but this army build isn't the best either for fighting Mongols. This was built for dealing battle-hardened, combated Russians compared to cavalry. So we're going to move out. I'm going to move my archers or the walls just to protect them. But I don't know how effective we're going to be to try and run them down. So we'll try and lock them in place. But hopefully we can destroy this army and show them a lesson that the brave men of the Germanic Empire, the brave men of Deutschland, are not to be fucked with. <laughs> Mongols. Alright, cool. God, they just have so many armies. It's kind of insane how many they spawn. Okay. So they are kiting me slightly here, which is annoying. But we are trying to run them down as effectively as we can. But for the first time, Mongols are fighting with the Holy Roman Empire. To be fair, we actually avoided them for quite some time. It was a while before they actually attacked us. Now my general's getting caught here. Born and bred on horseback, these Mongols. They're incredibly efficient fighters on horseback. Raining arrows from afar. Especially missile cav in medieval 2. Or even in the till it's, it's just so strong. <laughs> like, I would say, like, overall, in all Total Wars, chariots and bloody... Missile cab are just so, so strong. Well, the historical total was, I'd say. 3450. We've lost a fair few, taking them out. Only half of the enemy force remains, but we've lost a decent chunk of our own. Okay, so this time we have to swing around to our... Uh, basically move and change our military defense budget. <laughs> Instead of pumping most of it into Anatolia, where I thought the attack was coming from. But it's going to come from... These Polish borderlands and former Hungarian lands that we own, which is annoying, but so be it. But to be fair, the forts that are built in Anatolia won't go to waste because it's not just the Mongols we have to face nowadays, it's the damn Tumorids. Okay, we are going to win this one. It's about 65, 7% in our favor. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we just lost Carl there, which is a shame. He was getting quite low, but we kind of need as much cavalry in this as we can. We will win. But it's going to be a crazy loss. Oh, my God. So, I'm going to have to change the army, but I wasn't expecting an attack here. So, I think we're going to win, but it's going to buy by the absolute whiskers. I was expecting um, a defensive siege, really. Like, if the Russians siege us out, we'd actually have to fight them spear to spear, sword to sword within the city streets, but the Mongols are going to be better on the open field here. Look, there's so many of them remaining, still kiting us as well. Seven, yeah. Oh my god, we're just trading more than anything now. Our first battle and conflict with the Mongols is going to be a costly one. Like, even now, they're still so effective. Dude. Mongol horse archers, man. If you don't have the right army build, just absolutely shred and rip roll through you. So from now on, a lot of cavalry, a lot of horse archers, get them onto the eastern front. 
Hopefully they can take more Russian territory than mine. But... Seeing as they have more stacks in and around Smolensk, you'd think they'd actually move to... Uh, Novgorod, Novgorod. Which is their capital, or maybe some others, but it's just a player bias. The AI does... Aim and, and target at you to... More of an extent than the AI. But they can have all those lands in Russia. I didn't, I didn't want them. But that's what I was saying, like I don't even want the Turkic or Russian territory on that Eastern territory because it just gets absolutely swarmed. <laughs> and you don't even really get much of a break and they're not very wealthy and built up as well. You can't even, it's very hard to reinforce as well. It takes quite a bit to, to do so. You're better off like defending from a position where there's a cluster of settlements that you can make into castles and you can hold and reinforce. Like, taking some arbitrary line that the map was drawn on is not the best to defend from. So we're going to have to get more mercs in in Vilnius as we've defended from the Mongols. Well, unfortunately, I've got to wrap things up. Play for about an hour here today or so. I'll edit things down. But uh, stay tuned for episode 12 coming out soon because we're only you had a couple turns off, you would imagine, from getting the event before we can go into the Americas. Then we're going to build caravels, and then we're going to launch a full-scale a full scale invasion against the Aztec Empire, which should be a lot of fun. And, yeah, we might have some future wars against the Mongols and the Tumors, but if it turns into a stalemate, I might just wrap up the campaign there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're enjoying the series still. Man, nearly 160 roughly or so turns into this. It's, it's kind of crazy. But uh, stay tuned for a couple more episodes, I'd imagine, if not one. But yeah, thanks guys. Got to play the outro now. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you want to stay connected with me. I also want to say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tao, Lion B, Kyle P, Tom C, and White P. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.